Good morning, everyone. Well, it's morning now while I'm filming, filming this. I'm not sure if it will be morning when I put it up. But I've just come home from our trip, and I'm just out here checking on the garden. Everything's looking really good. I've got a few little mildew problems, a couple of bugs, a couple, a lot of weeds, actually. A lot of weeds. But um, I thought it was a good time to show you a little tip about um, some space saving ways that you can use your beds for multi-season plants. So um, over here I have, as you can see, my pak choy has gone to seed. So it's sent up flower stalks. This one's falling over, but that's okay. Um, and all of these little seed pods here, um, these have seeds inside of them. So I'm going to let them completely develop and they'll get nice and plump. And I'll let them dry out on the plant. And once they're all dried out, then I can harvest them and open them up and harvest the seeds. And I'll be sending some of them out as well for um, monthly rewards members and as part of a giveaway that I'm gonna be doing soon. Um, and then the plants themselves will need to be removed from the bed because their season is done. And the same thing with the spinach. Um, all of the spinach has gone to flower, as well as the cilantro. So I harvested a bunch of cilantro right after it started bolting. I got another crop of it, another harvest, and now I'm going to let this all go to seed and I'm going to harvest um, some of the seeds for replanting to package up and then some of them for cooking. Because when you see, um, I believe, I believe they call it coriander. I think when you see coriander in the store, it's actually cilantro seeds. I, you might have to fact check me on that, but I'm, I'm fairly certain that that's what it is. Um, so you can cook with it and it tastes really good anyway. So I'm basically, most of this bed is gonna be getting cleared out really soon. Um, so the cilantro's done, the carrots will be here for a while longer. This cabbage is doing okay because it's being shaded by the carrots, so I'm gonna leave it until it's not producing anymore and then we may harvest it early. The onions are gonna stay. The bok choy is coming out soon and the spinach is coming out soon. So something you can do is you can plan early when you are planting out your beds and you can know that you're gonna have space for a later season crop. So for example, I have a pumpkin plant right here. What? So I've just planted this out last week right before we left, knowing that a lot of this stuff is going to be coming out so it's going to have space and I can either train it inside of the bed, um, you know, kind of train the vines that way to go around and in between all of the onions because they're tall and skinny. Um, that's, I love interplanting with onions because they can just shoot up in between vines and leaves and stuff. Um, or I can train it down this way and I think we're going to actually move these tiles somewhere more productive and sacrifice this walkway because we really don't use it very much at all. Um, and I think we're going to take all of our vining plants and let train them down this way and then we can plant more on that side of the bed for a fall planting while these are still cropping up. Now that's the plan. There's always a plan. It doesn't always go that way but but we'll see how it works out. It's for me, it's always an experiment. It's always like, hey, this is a good idea. Let's try it out and maybe it'll work and maybe it won't. But pl planting my, my spring veggies in here and leaving some pockets for, you know, I pulled out a spinach plant right here and I just plugged in the um, pumpkin plant. And then I've got a butternut squash there. And so we can train them all down. We don't want them to be too crowded because we don't want them to mildew. But I think also if they're on the rocks, which aren't getting watered, or the bark and the, and the gravel over there, which aren't getting water, I think that will help the mildew problem as well versus having the vines in the wet dirt all the time. So just think about that for next year. And even for this year, look around and see what crops are coming out and which ones you can replace them with. Um, because if, you're, if your winter squash is going in, and your broccoli, say like over here, this whole brassica's bed, it's gonna be kind of clearing out soon. I've got my broccoli, you saw my broccoli video, um, and there's some little baby broccoli heads coming up. So we'll be harvesting those kind of as we go along. Um, but I have to pull all my cabbages too, because um, they're starting to get sunburned 
and we're having a little bit of a pest. I'm not 100% sure what's getting them, but they are too hot and they're starting to, um, the leaves are getting rubbery and they weren't so bad when we left, but when we came back, see, look at this one. You know, I think they're just getting too hot. I believe they're sunburned. I'm not sure what these bumps are. It could be from some kind of pest. Either way, the inner leaves, I peeled some leaves off of one of them. The inside's fine. So I'm going to um, harvest those and make sauerkraut. I'm gonna make a big, huge batch of sauerkraut, I think, and see, see how that goes. Um, but it's just time for some of these early things to come out and that's so cool because now I'll have space to put new stuff. So make sure that you're keeping that in mind when you, when you are uh, planting your crops. Sort of make a little plan and have an idea of like, oh, if I put all of these early ones kind of together, then when they're done around the same time, I can replace them with more stuff. I'm actually thinking about putting some more potatoes in this bed because some of my potatoes aren't doing very well. And I've been really bad about burying them. So I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Um, everything's always up in the air. It's just kind of uh, uh, an experiment, like I said. But how cool is that? And then um, so, oh, and I've got this rosemary being jungle-fied. I got to get it out of there. I got to save that one. So jungle method, you know, that's how I do things. Um, sometimes, you know, something will get overgrown like that rosemary back there. So that's okay. I'll just pull it out and put it in a little bit sunnier spot. It's no big deal. It's fine. It's perfectly happy. So, oh, another, another little thing too. Look at our strawberries. Look at how big these plants are. You know what I did this year? These were first year uh, strawberries. Uh, these were starts that I picked up at the store. And what I did is when they had flowers on them, I picked all the flowers off. And you know what? The plants got like gigantic. They got huge. So this is not, this, this is too wet. This um, runner basically, it didn't root. Um, maybe I need to kind of help them root a little bit. I'll probably need to pin that down. But this sent out a baby plant that didn't root, and so now it's dead. So I can just pull that off because I don't want it to mildew in there. Um, but see, so like this one still looks like it might have, might be viable. So what I'll need to do is dig that down, and then I'll grab a, a bobby pin from the house, and I'll bobby pin it down to the dirt so it's not on top of the mulch. And hopefully it'll make roots and then I'll have another baby plant and I can either dig it up and move it and snip, you know, snip that once it's rooted, pick it up and move it, or I can just leave it here and let this whole patch kind of grow. But see all my runners, you know, they didn't do well because I wasn't keeping up on it. And then here's something else exciting. This just showed up when I got back, but this is a ginger sprout. That I have ginger roots from the grocery store. Now these are all weeds. I mean, that's personally, that's not really a weed, that's edible but we have so much of it all over the place that I kind of pull it out from, I don't really want it growing in my ginger area. But how cool is that? I planted store-bought ginger. That was the most fun thing. I can't wait to see it grow up. It's supposed to be just this really pretty plant with spiky leaves. I think it's gonna look so nice over here behind the uh, strawberries and the, my thornless blackberry right here. So we'll see. Anyways, I just wanted to give you guys a little update because I've been gone and and um, I had a few things to share. So I'm, I'm going to be trying to do some more videos. Um, we really like doing that. That's fun. So let me know how you like them. And, um, and oh, and look at my sweet peas. I had no sweet pea blooms when I left. How gorgeous are these? You guys, I wish you could smell these. So if you love sweet peas, Make sure you're planting some low stuff. So I, put, I planted my tomatoes. This is where the sun gets really hot, comes in this way. I planted my tomatoes really low and it keeps their roots, their base of the plants nice and shady. And it's so cool in there. If I stick my hand in there, it actually feels cold, even in the heat of the summer or the hot days. Um, so if you like sweet peas and you wanna try them maybe in fall, you can sow them in fall and they'll come up in spring or you can just sow them really early in the spring. Like I think I sowed these in March maybe Feb no I think I did these in March um, like around St. Patty's Day 
and it was really cold here and look at how beautiful they are and these are called a spencer spencer ripple i'll have to look at the packet i think they're called a, a spencer ripple maybe multiflora mix or something but you guys i wish you could smell them they are amazing the smell of these is oh, so fantastic i'm going to cut some here in a minute and bring them inside for a vase i think do you guys say vase or vase my husband and I always are debating about how words are pronounced. It's so fun. He thinks we should say vase. I think we should say vase. Tomato, tomato, right? Oh my gosh, Mike. That was not open last night. I was out here watering and that was not open. Let's see, is it in focus? Yeah. That is so fun. You know what, you guys? Growing a garden is so rewarding. It's worth all the work worth it so and then I've got some some sunflowers out here so I had planted two to a hole and um, I thought you know what I'm just gonna let these grow jungle but I think the weaker ones are actually struggling so unfortunately I think I need to cull these little ones that are going sideways because I don't want all my sunflowers falling over I haven't decided yet what do you guys think should I let them jungle so I've got some singles over there that I know will do great so maybe I should just leave a couple double just to see what they do. That's what I'll do. That's what's so fun about gardening. You can just experiment. And if you plant enough, if you plant extra of everything, then you have, then you have enough to um, experiment with, you know? So I've got some over here that I'm like, okay, those will do great. So why not see what happens? Worst case scenario, I lose a couple and maybe they don't do great. Or maybe I'll have to stake them. That's fine. These are my dahlias. My first year of growing dahlias, I've got them potted. I haven't decided if or when I'm gonna move them into the ground. Here's some more um, seedlings. There's my basil. I'm gonna plant out my basil when it gets a little bigger and then I think I'm gonna give away some squash plants on our giving table because um, I just have too many. So, and here's the other awful thing. Do you guys know what bindweed is? A lot of you live in California, so you don't have it. Here in the Treasure Valley, we have this stuff called bindweed and um, the roots can be 20 feet long. Can you believe that? They can grow under a landscape cloth for 20 feet and then peek out the outside. So um, this is a daily thing. These actually can grow two, three inches in one day. See, look at this, it's on my fence. It'll do that to my plants too. So if I leave it here, it'll actually, it'll actually grow up all my sunflowers here and, um, and choke them, so that's, that's a chore I'll have to do today. So anyways, I'm gonna go inside and maybe maybe I'll upload this video. Um, it's kind of just chatty. I'm not really, I don't think I'm gonna cut it down because I just want you guys to see the different things that I've got going on. I think I might show you another little thing too over here I've got. So, um, one more thing over here, my Brussels sprouts. We've got a major problem. Now, I, I may pull all these Brussels sprouts because we have a generational issue going on in this garden. Um, these are completely infested with these gray aphids. Let's see if my, um, I'm using my phone for this video and it's pretty good, but here, bear with me while I try to get this in focus here. Okay, all right, so these are really bad. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray these off with like a really hard jet of water first to remove them. And then I'm gonna come through with this new uh, product that I just recently bought. Um, it's made by a local company here in Idaho, in Wilder, and um, it has peppermint oil in it. It's actually a foliar nutrient that you can spray directly on the, on the leaves. Um, but it has, this, it has different oils in it that are supposed to be really helpful for repelling bugs. So I think I'm gonna give that a try. And if that doesn't work, you know what? I might pull all the Brussels sprouts out of here because we they had an infestation in this garden last year when we moved in and even though i rotated the crops i think that there was just too much larvae and i think it might kill my plants i don't know if i can get rid of them so i'm going to keep trying i'm going to try a few a few more things if i can't get rid of them i may just have to sacrifice the sprouts for this year just to give the soil a break and let them let everything die back i don't know what do you guys think about that I'm not sure what I'm gonna have to do. We'll see if I can rescue them. Look at my chamomile, it's about to open. 
this is gonna this you guys this chamomile smells like absolute heaven on earth and when the flowers are ready I'm gonna be packaging some up and drying it to send you so you can have it in tea you're gonna love it okay I think that's it for now there's a good little 15 minute video you guys can enjoy me just walking around my garden this is what I do when I have my coffee my kids are eating breakfast well Zach is home right now so I don't do this every morning but because he's home I'm able to just come out here and do this but when he's working he's on a vacation right now he took some days off to spend time with us isn't that cool It's amazing. It looks completely different than it did when I left three days ago. It's my jungle. Look at that sunflower. This one right here. Ooh, it's gonna be a big guy. I'm glad I put him. I put him right next to that T post for a reason, so I can tie him up if I need to. All right. There you go, guys. I'll be talking to you soon.